What do you use for protection? <laughs> I don't use protection, to be honest with you. You don't have Right, yeah, no. Generation <laughs> Z is just out of control. Okay, hello, my little chickadees in the podcast. This is during a commercial. In the show. Music's playing. Uh, they're getting me the scripts. And this is where I'm going to do the podcast. All right, um, we're going to take you behind the scenes of our graphics department to show you how it is that they help us tell new stories to you and how they help design the entire look for our show. So I decided, okay, let's have the newspaper spinning and then it would fly down into Robin's hands. Also, there are some people who become local legends that you just feel like, man, the rest of the world should know them. Such is the case with a man called Baton Bob around these parts. Yes, we're gonna tell you why this man bravely marches around the streets of Atlanta by himself, spreading joy, he hopes anyway. But first. We're up here now in the CNN newsroom, and I wanted to take you to the place where Bob prets his weather forecast um, every day. You don't ever see this on the air. No, no, you can't. This is <laughs> this is the nuts and bolts right here. It's the bunker. <laughs> it's great. Bob, show me what you look at in terms of um, getting the latest on, like today, Tropical Storm Dolly. Right. Well, when I came in uh, looking at Tropical Storm Dolly for the first part, we knew it was going to gain some strength. I mean, there was no way it wasn't going to. It was run into an area where there was no shear and the water temperature too. Let me show you this computer. Over here. Mm -hmm. so this is the Gulf of Mexico right there and this is the actual real time, close to real time within about 10-15 minutes of the water temperatures taken by satellite. Now if you look at it, look at the Gulf Coast right there. All these temperatures that are red, well that's closing in on about 31 degrees Celsius. So you're talking real warm temperatures coming on in, closing in on it. You get over to the west, that's where that storm was. It was going over warm water and a hurricane needs about 80 degrees of surface water to really strengthen and that's what it was getting into. So that's why we knew it was a tropical storm and we said all day long, it could become a category one or two. Yeah. Boom, it did. Where are we in terms of the hurricane season? Now I know it ends in November. What I mean is, yeah. are we behind in terms of the predicted number of storms? No. No, in fact, we're above July has had a record storm when you talk about Bertha. It was the longest lived name storm in July history. That was Bertha. So yeah, so we're talking about an active storm season already. And if you look at the water temperatures, if I expanded it out over the next couple of months, it's really going to start warming up across the Atlantic. And that's bad news. That means you're going to see the hurricanes form in the middle of the Atlantic and the Gulf and even off the coast of the United States. Yeah. So we don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but you have your eyes out basically. Right. The peak season for hurricane season, the peak date is September 10th. So we're not even close to that yet. It ramps up then and then it starts to fall back down after that. Bob, thanks for the info. Bob, what are some of the, the weirdest names that you've heard parents name their children? Uh, I can tell you, Larry Sprinkle, the guy that I worked with, I loved him. <laughs> I asked him this because we had a crazy story on the air today about crazy things people are naming their children. Oh, number 16 bus shelter here, number 16 bus shelter here. <laughs> a nine-year-old girl won't have to go through life with a name. Tallulah does a hula from Hawaii. I kid you not. A New Zealand judge made a reward of the court so that she can change her name. He's concerned about a rash of bizarre names in New Zealand. Some of them have been legally rejected, like fish and chips, yeah, Detroit, stallion, and sex fruit. But some pretty odd ones have made it through the court system and said to be okay, like number 16 bus shelter. Come on. Your child named the number 16 bus shelter, midnight chardonnay, and violence. <laughs> well, Harry from Tennessee says, my first kiss was with a girl named Candy Kane. Brenda from Ontario emails us saying, I remember a guy in high school named Sterling Silver. <laughs> Sean from Texas says, I have a bank teller named Sharmonica. Her parents just put a S ahead of harmonica. Uh, all right, we're back in the studio um, here. Uh, during a commercial, so you can see what's happening during a commercial. In our segment called, How Does That Work? We're gonna take you to the graphics department. They really dress up the show to help us better tell stories and to give the show the look. Good morning, bright and early on a Thursday. It's great. To now this is Dallas. He is a design supervisor here in the graphics department. Yes, and um, I just want him to show you how they bring stories to life for us or what we call animation. Show animation. me something whiz bang. How do you okay. do it? 
Well, they uh, came to me and they said, you know, Robin has a newsletter and we wanted to promote it, but without you having to necessarily say it every day, we exactly. could have an animation that would say it for you. I started out with a great picture that someone had taken of you. I think this is you at your house. It starts out with a newspaper that says, Robin's thoughts in your inbox, and it uh, promotes the newsletter that you send out every day. So this goes from your head to a picture. And then I have to think of, like, how are we going to make it a fun animation? Yeah, because there it sits. There it sits. So I now designed, what? so I made you the illustration of you, and then I made a illustration of a newspaper, kind of old school, extra, extra type newspaper. <laughs> so I decided, okay, let's have the newspaper spinning, and then it would fly down into Robin's hands. And quickly, there would be this color that would come on that the eye would travel and follow around. And I put notes on here for the animator to say, hey, this is how I want it to move. Then we kind of keep going with different ideas of you're following this color as the streak as it flies through different colors and changes. And it goes through the Robin Mead logo that's all blown up real big. You can kind of tell what it is, it's real fast. And then you show up again and the line runs behind you and you fly out with the newspaper one more time, comes back down, and all the information comes up. I give this idea, this mock-up, to one of our animators, Melanie, and she animated it and we picked out some really cool music for it, so I'll show it to you. Okay. Hang on to your hats. like it a lot. It's kind of groovy. Kind of groovy. Yeah. Kind of Wake you up in the morning. One of the things that's really important is that it's really a team effort. So we have our lead designer, Jenny Specker. She's the one who came up with a whole look for your show. Okay. And then we work off of that, keeping the design similar, pushing it here and there, and getting a real cohesive look, because your show's got a really cool look. Thanks to you guys. Thank you for your brain work on the look for the show. Yeah, it's very happy. I, I like it a lot. Jennifer! Okay, back in the studio. Finally, around here, if you say Baton Bob, people's eyes light up. Not our Bob. There's another Bob running around here who has a parade, basically, by himself out on the street, and he has fans. That's sweetie. Hey, baby. Ah! He is so great. What do you love that he does? That you the just... way he twirled that baton. Yeah. And, and, and the costume. Yeah. Love the costume. He's great. He's awesome. Awesome! And you found awesome. Baton Bob today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How often do you do this? Usually I do it, try, try to do it once a day, but my whole schedule has changed within the last year, so I'm getting out periodically now. When this whole process started six years ago now, I was out every day. Every day putting on costumes? Every day. All of this came about because your doctor told you what? Well, you know, this has probably been 10 or so years ago I was seeing a therapist about some personal issues and we were talking about the process of depression and the effect that it has on everybody and we were looking for an antidote. And so for an antidote, he had suggested that if I would at some point, when you're slipping into that mindset, if you go do something that you know for sure that makes you feel good, um, I was slipping into that mindset and I just remembered that antidote from that session. And that's when I went back in my closet and pulled out my baton and went into the park to literally to twirl my own spirit. So <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. Hi guys. Hi, nice to meet you. Welcome to the park. You never know what you're gonna run into in the I park. Know. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> For, for spreading the joy, and we're just gonna let you go ahead and do your thing as I say goodbye to the podcast people.